keep my mouth shut and talk because I, my tooth broke off and looked like oh, a fucking <laughs> <bucket dealer. laughs> Hi, I'm Warwick. This is my office. So I've got a few bits and pieces in here and a heap of stuffed toys. I haven't grown up yet, but yeah. No worries. Come on down. <laughs> I got a few real. I've been collecting for, oh, I don't know how long, probably 35, 40 years, something like that. Always running out of space, always rearranging stuff to find more room. This is a, oh, I shouldn't do that. <laughs> yeah, this is just a complete video of my room. Over the next few weeks and months, we're putting on shorter videos with individual reels on them, so you get a bit of an idea, but just a general overview of my room. They're crouch reels, made in Melbourne. On this wall is mainly side cast reels. There's Alwi's. Acme's, Thompson's, um, Pastimes, um, Cosmos's, Pacific's, I think that's about all on that wall. Um, the fish up the top, um, they come from the Melbourne Museum in Melbourne, I think. I'll leave oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, uh, on this wall, mainly uh, game fishing reels. Uh, the Samson's, Acme's, Dreyer's, uh, uh, Graham's. So there's a lot of each, um, a lot of manufacturers, but later down the track we'll be just um, itemising a, a few by brands. So it's not too boring now. On this wall is more game fishing reels. Yeah, I'm not real good at this. I've no, no, never was a movie star. <laughs> um, yeah, there's game fishing reels um, right down this wall. There's about. Uh, Six, I think, six or seven different manufacturers of these drills. In this corner is my Albi corner. I'm sitting in the sun And these heavy on my mind I'm sitting in the sun I've got Albies from the first ones they made till I got one yellow one, that's about it I think, but most of them are timber or bakelite. The jacket is Jack Albies fishing jacket. Bruce and Glenn kindly donated that to me. Um, in this cupboard's mainly fly fishing gear. Um, uh, these are Hilden reels and parts and, and heaps of fly stuff. I've never been fly fishing so not an expert on it. Um, this wall here there's all probably about 15 different brands of fly reels on the top. Then you've got Surf Masters. I've got the first Surf Master was made. Taylor's. Egg beaters. Uh, 
And um, these are curl reels on there, that shell. These woods reels. And a few side casts. The ones there are massive, the shiny big ones that look like hubcaps. They're massive reels. Alvey reels up on the top here, uh, dual aces and aces, and then the very unusual collier reel here. These are made some uh, overhead surf masters and Dawson's, uh, all that, and here we've got all the trophy in the reel, they belong to. Ted Smout, they named the Hornybrook Bridge after him, he was a uh, First World War veteran and um, fishing kept his sanity, I think he lived to over 100 but he fished from till about 1961 or 62 I think there are a couple of his, that's his trophy that the Queensland Government give him and the plaques and that's his gaff up the top there I used to go fishing with Max Lawson but <coughs> Yeah, there's um, some Ebro fly reels there, plasmy and steelite, uh, a fish kill, bang and flight, and some, yeah, sea martens and a few bits of stuff on the bottom. This side, the money is always on the top row, they'll be there, but most of them on these three rows are Ipswich reels. I've got, uh, the earliest one is, is uh, Christmas and it was 1913. He's, started making them and this one came from the family so it's unmarked but Doug he was making reels probably the first one of the first in Australia in Queensland even sidecast reels. The top rows Bert Allen then you got Lane Curtin reels all the stainless ones this row here is mainly uh, PD James they were made by um, Preston and Dolby Jay, I think, uh, what was his name? Wilfred, Wilfred Jackson. I think that's where the J come from. When he got them here, curtain reels and, um, and PDJs. The next shelf's, um, oh, there's some mixed switch ones up the top, but these are Townsend reels. I've got his own personal reels. A lot of, um, on the bottom, a lot of uh, workshop parts and stuff. Um, yeah. In this, Covered here, there's a Tasman Wilson. These are three of only English reels of God, I think I've got about five um, same grey reels. I get two um, cow reels. Um, oh, that's one was made in, um, the one in the middle was made in Lismore. It belonged to Aubrey Sarah. He had Reels built specially for fishing on at um, for shark fishing off Bondo Beach. They used to swim there as well now and screams and yells because of the shark. <laughs> this top shelf is Justice and Arc reels. The Justice are all the side casts, the Arc. Some of these are, I think that's an Arc. Yeah, that's an Arc. Uh, the next two rows, except for the Wallace reels are all uh, Nick Cross reels. The bottom is some, a couple of Scott reels, um, top notch, and some air reels which were made in um, Ipswich. Uh -huh. Here are some Yabby Punks. And they're the early ones with the two holes, you put your finger over the hole. Probably sick of seeing my ugly head. Uh, now, top row is mainly E-Rows and Pacifics. Most of them are made in Melbourne. Steel lights, nearly all steel lights on that row. Motor force and, and um, a few other reels, but yeah, we'll go through that later and play the day. A big sidecast reel made by uh, Carl, what the hell did he pronounce his name? Cotton Shaw. He was, um, he was a tool, uh, toy maker. 
but he made boats as well, but he didn't go fishing for you, but see, see? On the next row was Ed Bush's own reel, it's a, a level wine, one of the first reels were level wine. Then there's a Ebro game reel, I've never, it's the only one that exists since I know of. Oh, swordfish and some Atlantis. Methyl Tom, right, I think, hang on. Uh, that was, um, yeah. Ethel Dombray, isn't it? That's what I thought. Where are we up to? Did you stop? Uh, no, still going. Oh. Huh. Yeah, it's... they're made by Ethel Dombray, and the ones in the centre. That's one of his tackle boxes. And I've got another one over there further. <laughs> This big reel here is a Samson. I don't know who made them. No idea. Uh, there's a mixture of reels on this stand here. Uh, yeah. Top row you've got um, Lixels. Uh, you've got a couple of Velox and Sellox. Sierra Masons. Some Ideals. Uh, uh, AFA, Perfects, LPSs, Pilots, Alvi, and I don't know who the mould was that was made, uh, Alvi type sidecar thrill. Then your neck ray, you've got Elites and Nigams and um, Alan Knight thrills. Um, the rest are, a lot of the rest are unbranded, and so it's, you don't know who. Um, no idea who made them. Uh, on this side, we've got the C Martins. Timber one that um, belonged to um, um, uh, Cliff Martin. Uh, then you've got a collection of stuff uh, that uh, belonged to um, Bill Soul. He used to fish with um, Len Thompson. Uh, you've got a few different reels here. You've got um, Russell England's reels there. Uh, then you've got Phillips, um, Smith and Jones, an Innes reel, which is in Bob's book. A couple of gems, Reggie Baker, Ajaxes, heaps of Ajaxes along here. Then you've got this unusual one that was by Mick McCarthy, it's an aluminium uh, geared side cast. Next row you've got GSs, Islands, Marlins, Pula Hebra Marlin, then some um, corkers. These, these top two shelves are um, Scott reels, side cast and thing. Uh, the middle one. And um, that one, okay. well, second one anyway. They're side cast, geared side cast, uh, crown with this. And the bottom shelf is Albert Hall's reel. A bit big egg beater. Um, in, along the cabinet, there's a lot of fishing tackle and stuff. Uh, and a few Albie reels. Uh, still waiting for my new Albie. I've got one that's exactly the same as a replica they're building. In, and Con kindly gave me a box to put it in, but I'm still waiting for the, the other one. Um, these are, then just a couple of the newer Albies. Um, that's an old, I think it's about 1949, that one, unusual. Uh, there are Albies there right down to the bottom. Um, yeah. Um, top row here, you got surf, you got JW Day reels. In the box is all Bob Dunn's um, literature that he used for making the book. Uh, then you've got uh, Landmore, next row, uh, you've got um, oh, um, Pollock, Cam Pollock reels, Vins, more Vins, 
Uh, and um, you've got a lorry, two lorries. These here are day reels. And then you've got a um, few veal reels. You've got a three of them. And then parts of, of Jeffrey's that come from his house, all these reels that he was making. Then you've got porpoises, a couple of rows of porpoises, and some more different reels. Um, Bob Zahn's manuscript that he used for his Australian Fishing Museum book. These look like workshop reels. A couple of rare ball bearing reels I've made for fishing down at Fingal. My brain's gone now. Um, <laughs> we've been <everywhere. laughs>
So this guy's reels were first, um, oh shit, what's his name? Were first made by Don Charlton in Newcastle. This is the first, this is a prototype miner. There's only two of these made, one for his wife and one for his neighbor's wife. This one here is the first seascape prototype. They used it to fishing in Iluk, I think there's three or five of them made. Morris Hagar and um, Don Spencer bought all the parts and started to produce seascape reels again in 1985, but didn't last uh, very long. Uh, this is a miner made by um, Morris Hager. It's got a bit wider gearing in it. They're two um, ordinary sea skates made by Morris. Um, down on this shelf is all the parts that I got from um, Morris. Some of them were stuff he made, some of them were made by Don Charlton. These are just a few. Um, different variations of seascape reels. On the bottom there's some, a lot of more seascape parts and some new boxes for the reels. Over the next few weeks and months I'll try and do a more detailed, more, more, smaller video with more detail. This up here is a kite for kite fishing in Western Australia. Hold on. Billy. 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 Whoops, I don't like this. He's getting vicious. <laughs> you, what'd you say? Rag off. <laughs> That's not nice, is it?